happy little games. Hello everyone, just wanted to let you all know that my sister channel, Batman QC's History of Everything Retro, is up and running for your viewing pleasure. The latest episode is the history of A Nightmare on Elm Street, in which I not only talk about the very first film, but also the toys, collectibles, and the games. So if you're into that sort of stuff, be sure and check it out. I'm still trying to build the channel, so I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. What is it about the beat-em-up that is so enjoyable? The young and old. Big or small, it seems as if everybody has enjoyed this genre at one time or another. For me personally, I love taking control of my steroid-infused muscle-bound oaf as he set out across the city dealing with the various thuggies, buggies, wankers, and crackheads. Throw in multiplayer co-op support and you've got a recipe for success. There was one beat-em-up in particular that decided to buck the trend and try something new. This new game provided not only a challenging experience, but also a smile to little boys' faces everywhere. No, I'm not talking about Chowiniki Bakuretsu Rentao Hen. I'm talking about the 8-bit NES classic River City Ransom. What changes were made to the American version when it was released? So grab your weapons and let's get ready to rumble because this is the history of River City Ransom. The year is 1988 and Technos Japan has an idea to expand upon their successful Double Dragon series. RPGs such as Dragon Quest were all the rage and designer Mitsuhiro Yoshida wanted to implement elements of this into their Double Dragon engine. He also wanted to create a Double Dragon type of game that the parents and the children could play together. The game uses characters from the Kunio Kun series, which got its start with the first game in the series, Niketsu Koha Kunio Kun. The game was a semi autobiographical affair created by Yoshihiro Kishimoto, which was based around his high school years where he regularly got into fights. This was localized here in the States into the arcade game Renegade, but instead of fighting against other schools, you fight against rival gangs. The American version was inspired by the movie The Warriors. Mr. Kishimoto would go on to create the Double Dragon series, which was intended as a sequel to this game, but during development, it was decided to create an entire new game instead. Technos loved the Kunio Kun characters and expanded the franchise into sports games, with the first one being Super Dodgeball. During development, the characters became shorter and super deformed, but with more exaggerated facial expressions. Super Dodgeball was another huge hit for the company, both in the arcades and the NES. This prompted Technos to create his first console-specific beat-em-up downtown Niketsu Monogatari, or River City Ransom, as it's known here in the States. The game features role-playing elements and includes non-linear stages, which means there's an open world to explore. As the story goes, Alex and Ryan are two high school students who just happen to be playing hooky. On this very day, rival gang Lord Slick has taken control of River City High School and imprisoned all of the students, including Ryan's girlfriend, Cindy. It's up to our heroes to venture across River City battling the various street gangs and finally take down the villainous Slick once and for all. If you were a fan of Double Dragon on the NES, then you will feel right at home here. One major addition is the two-player co-op mode, which was sorely missing in the original Double Dragon for the NES. The gameplay is very similar with you having a punch button and a kick button. You can also run by double tapping the D-pad in the direction you want to go. While running, you can also jump and unleash a powerful kick. There are various weapons located throughout the levels. These include wooden crates, trash cans, tires, rocks, chains, and more. You can throw the weapon at your enemy or even kick it if it's on the ground. It's even possible to pick up a fallen rival gang member and throw him. If you are playing in two-player mode, you can pick up your partner and throw him without doing any damage to the second player. 
You'll notice at the bottom of the screen, enemies and friends alike tend to babble on and on. Most of the time it's just random nonsense, but occasionally you will get a clue. They also tend to yell out BARF every time one of them die. You can change how fast the scrolling of these messages go just to get them over with. I wish there was something similar I could use when my wife is talking to me. After defeating each enemy, they will drop their lunch money. Money can be used to purchase items in the town such as food. You can also use it to purchase books in which you learn new fighting techniques. The shops are located at the malls and include a bookstore, coffee shop, drugstore, fast food, sushi bar, and a shoe shop. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory such as hitting the drugstore when you are low on stamina. The bookstore is where you can buy books on tricks which are the new techniques you need to defeat Slick and his minions. Even though it's an open world style of game, you don't want to venture too far off without first leveling up your character. Otherwise, you'll have your butt handed to you pretty quickly. If you look at your stats listed among the offense and defense, you will see willpower which will determine whether or not your character can get up after all of his health is depleted. Thankfully, there is a password system, but if you do manage to die, you will be sent back to the last town with half of your money. There are saunas around the town which will provide a bit of cheeky comic relief and also heal you. What kind of a game is this? Once you've leveled up enough and managed to make it to River City High, you have to face four sub-bosses before you can actually proceed. After doing so, you will face two twins who look very similar to Billy and Jimmy Lee, who even have their same Double Dragon music. Perhaps these are their evil clones, Bimmy and Timmy. The gangs that you face in order of toughness are the Frat Guys. The Jocks, the Homeboys, the Mob, the Squids, the Internationals, the Cowboys, and the Plague. The levels you will encounter are Grotto Mall, Waterfront Mall Sherman Park Capitol Avenue Bridge The WSL Warehouse Armstrong Thruway, Vacant Third Wheel Factory, Sticksville, Downtown. Burb Village, River City High, and Crosstown High. If you manage to make it all the way to the end, you face off against Slick. If you are a bad enough dude, you can defeat him in no time. Once you do, you rescue your girlfriend Cindy just in time for her to continue shopping.
The game went through a number of changes before it was released in America and Europe. The original character names were Kunio and Ricky. In the original version, the characters wore Japanese school uniforms. Some of the backgrounds are changed including Japanese mailboxes and signs being replaced with American ones. The name was changed to Street Gangs for its European release. One thing that didn't make the final cut was a half-naked girl which I assume could be from the sauna. It did receive a couple of ports with the first one being for the Sharp X68000 home computer. This features better graphics and a bit smoother gameplay. It also features three enemies on screen at once as opposed to only two as found in the Famicom version. There are new items and fighting techniques for the player including a whirlwind kick and a headbutt. Several new shops are included as well. This version also has new areas giving each gang their own high school and adding new bosses. The game also includes character portraits in the story scenes which was definitely needed in my opinion. To the best of my knowledge, there is no English translation patch so you have to rely on guides if you're going to play this. <laughs> In 1993, a version for the PC Engine Super CD-ROM was released. This one features enhanced graphics with greater detail put into the characters and backgrounds. The shading especially looks great and gives everything an almost 3D feel. The sound is amazing with Red Book audio and fully voiced characters. The controls are still nice and tight and feels so right. Once again, the text is in Japanese, so you will need a guide to help you out. However, if you are a fan of the original NES Classic, you'll love this one. <laughs> River City Ransom X was released for the Game Boy Advance in 2004. The game is a complete remake of the NES Classic with some extensive changes being made. The core gameplay remains the same but has been added to such as new moves, combos and slightly better animation. Everything is new and different but familiar if that makes any sense. For example, Everything costs a lot more money in this version which extends the gameplay time overall. There are a number of options you can change such as the number of bad guys appearing on screen at once, the speed of the combat, the balance of the different attacks, and even mess with the gravity. Everything has been given a fresh coat of paint and it looks really nice running on the Game Boy Advance. The flickering that was found in the original NES release has been removed as well as the slowdown. The sound has also received some improvements which wasn't really necessary as there wasn't anything even remotely resembling a queef or a fart in the original version. There is no two player option although you can fight with a computer controlled companion instead. The password system has been removed and in its place is a battery backup system. It still plays like the NES original and I really enjoyed this version. In 1991, a sequel to River City Ransom was released with a Japanese title I'm not even going to attempt to say. It translates to Downtown Special Kunio Kun's Historical Drama All Members Assemble. The game is presented as a play with Kunio and the gang taking on other roles in feudal Japan. Kunio's character of Kunumasa visits his dying master Bunzao to give him medicine. While on his journey, 
Bunzao's daughter Okoto is kidnapped. Kunumasa has to journey across Japan and rescue her. Your primary goal is to track down the various gangs all across the country and take down their leader. There are nine main areas in your journey, but luckily you have a map in your possession. In single player mode, you do have a computer controlled AI companion who does help you out. The only way to level up your character is by defeating the various enemies. Just eating food by itself will no longer do this, although it will increase your health. There are new moves and techniques to learn, including ones taken straight from Double Dragon 1 and 2. The graphics have been updated slightly, but thanks to the number of levels available, the backgrounds are much more varied. The music is extremely pleasant, which apparently includes renditions of various Japanese folk songs. The password system is gone, instead a battery backup save is used. Initially, this was only released in Japan for the Famicom, but thanks to the Double Dragon and Kunio Kun Retro Brawler bundle, it was translated and released in English. This version also removed a lot of the slowdown found in the original game. There have been a number of spin-off Kunio games, including a vast assortment of sports games, with my personal favorites being Downtown Nagetsu, March Super Awesome Field Day, and Downtown Nagetsu Baseball Monogatari. Kunio finally entered the 16-bit era with Shodai Niketsu Koha Kunio Kun or First Generation Hot-Blooded Tough Guy Kunio Kun. This time we see Kunio and his friends taking a trip to Osaka where his pal Hiroshi gets mixed up with some gangs. It's up to you to rescue Hiroshi and save the day. This is a sequel to the original Kunio Kun arcade game and uses a more realistic art style than was found in River City Ransom. It still uses several role playing aspects though that the series is known for. Your home base is your hotel room which you can go back to whenever you are low on health. You can explore a bit but the story progression is fairly linear. There are day and night cycles this time around which will determine when certain events happen. Unlike previous games, you can actually talk to the various townspeople you encounter. There are also some bad apples roaming about who will attack you for no reason. You will gain experience points by defeating the enemies which you will need to level up. You also have magic healing spells in case your energy gets a little bit too low. The enemies no longer drop money after being defeated, but instead they will drop certain items that pertain to the story mode. The graphics look very nice with the more realistic style being used. The action however is a bit slow and not quite as fast paced as River City Ransom. It's still fun to play especially if you are a fan of the series. In 2017, River City Ransom Underground was released for Windows. This is considered a sequel to the original NES game and takes place two decades later. The game revolves around a new gang of kids called The Flock who have been framed in a kidnapping who must clear their names. There are 10 playable characters including Alex and Ryan and everyone from a karate master to a wrestler to a brawler. The fighting system is much more complex with a button for grappling and a button for special attacks. You also have combos you can use as well. Similar to previous games, you have to defeat enemies to earn experience points to level up. 
You do get a little cash from the enemies you defeat, but not as much as in the original games. You still need to eat food to get stronger. The graphics have a nice 2D style, which is always appreciated in my opinion. The colors are nice and vibrant, and the animation is silky smooth. The music is pretty good, although nothing memorable to be honest. It plays pretty much how you would expect it if you're familiar with the River City Ransom franchise. River City Girls was released in 2019. As the story goes, Kunio and Ricky have been kidnapped, so it's up to their girlfriends, Misako and Kyoto, to rescue them. The first thing you notice is the gorgeous 2D pixel art that looks fantastic. The animation is silky smooth with large, expressive sprites. This is definitely a love letter to the franchise because not only does the game feature characters from the Kunio Kun series, but it also features appearances by Billy, Jimmy, Slick, Linda, a Bobo, and even Martha Splatterhead from the Combat Tribes. The enemy roster is also quite silly with cheerleaders, cyborgs, and wrestlers looking to take you down. Similar to the previous games, you have to level up your character by defeating the enemies and eating food. The moveset of each character is quite extensive, but you can also purchase more moves and techniques from the dojo. The music is absolutely phenomenal with a large number of tracks. The sound effects are great with a fully voiced cast. There is also a co-op mode which makes an already fun game even better. This is one of the best updated versions of the core game that I have played. The Double Dragon and Kunio Kun Retro Brawler Bundle was released in 2020. This features 18 games, 11 of which were unreleased in North America. The price tag of $40 is perfect, coming out to be just about $2 per title. Considering a lot of these games were never released in English, this is a great deal for any Kunio fan out there. The list of games include... And that pretty much takes care of the history of River City Ransom. There are a lot of other games I didn't cover, so if you would like me to go back and take a look at these in depth, let me know in the comments down below. I've always enjoyed this series of games, and it sure was a lot of fun to go back and revisit them. If you've never had a chance to throw down in River City, be sure and give these games a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, 
If you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you everybody so much for watching.